morning, dear students. My name is Dr. Shwai Mohammad Bhatt. Uh, I'm working as assistant assistant professor in the Department of English at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, in this video lecture, we shall be talking about simple compound and complex sentences. How can we form simple sentences, and what are simple sentences? What are compound sentences, and how can we form compound sentences? What are complex sentences and how can we form complex sentences? We shall be talking about this before jumping to the simple compound and complex sentences. It's essential to know about the sentence, about the sentence structure, about the types of sentence and about the ingredients which are required for a sentence. I mean about the different components of sentence. So I shall try my level best to make you people clear, make you people understand about the sentence first. Then we shall be going with the simple compound and complex sentence. So let's first talk about sentence structure. What is sentence structure? Because when we talk about simple compound and complex sentences, it's about the structure of sentences we talk about. These are the sentences where the structure is different. For the simple sentence, we have a different structure. For the compound sentence, we have a different structure. And for complex sentence, we have a different structure. So it all is, it all is a matter of structure. Sentences, they change their, like, uh, they change, the, the sentences can be recognized uh, according to their structures. It is there, it is the structure of a sentence which tells us whether the sentence is a simple sentence or compound sentence or a complex sentence. So I feel it very really necessary to make you people first understand what the structure is. Now, if we talk about sentence structure, it is a grammatical component that tells you exactly where and how each component of a sentence should be placed in order to blend and make sense. So sentence structure is a grammatical component. It's not like you are putting subject in the middle or sometimes you start with the gerund or with the, uh, with the present participle and you speak like it is your choice how to, how to just uh, construct a sentence. It's not like that. Or it's not like you, it sounds better to put subject at the beginning and you are putting the subject at the beginning for this reason that it sounds better. So this is not, it's not like this. It works with some other intentions. It works according to the rules of grammar. So there is a structure which we call, there is a system which we call a sentence structure. And this sentence structure is bound to the grammar. Sentence structure, it is a grammatical component. It is a grammatical component which tells us exactly where and how each component of a sentence should be placed. It tells us where to place noun, where to place subject, where to place verb, where to place object, where to place conjunction, or where to place these uh, punctuation marks, including comma, semicolon, uh, which we commonly use in the sentences. And it is this sentence structure which tells us where to use different components of sentence. And when we use these different components of a sentence according to grammatical rules, according to the sentence structure, so we can give order to the sentence and the sentence can make a sense. So as we all are aware with the definition of sentence, sentence is a combination of words having complete meaning and complete sense. So this complete meaning and complete sense can only be attained, can only be achieved. A sentence can only give you complete meaning and complete sense when the structure is up to the date, up to mark. When the sentence is following a sentence structure. So what Collins Dictionary says, says about a uh, sentence structure, it says, it is the grammatical arrangement of words in sentences. It is the grammatical arrangement of words. So we arrange words, we arrange the components of grammar in a sentence by a system which we call as grammar, which we call as sentence structure. 
So this is what Collins Dictionary talks about sentence structure. Collins Dictionary says it is the grammatical arrangement of words in the sentences. In other words, the sentence structure is what de what defines the way of a sentence will look and sound. In other words, the sentence structure is what is sentence structure? It is what defines the way of a sentence will look and sound. It is sentence structure which defines the way your sent. It defines how your sen how your sentence sounds and how does it look. So the structure, the sense, and the meaning of your sentence can be attained when you follow the proper sentence structure. So we come to know by talking on upon sentence structure that sentence structure is must for making a meaningful and 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 and. Uh, and a sentence which is having proper sense. So it has to be followed when we are talking about sentence. Otherwise, the sentence is not, it cannot be called a sentence. It can only be called a combination of words. And when it is only the combination of words, it cannot be called a sentence unless and until it has proper meaning and proper sense. That proper meaning and proper sense can be attained by following the sentence structure. Then, now we have some parts and components of uh, uh, basic parts and components of a sentence. What are the basic parts? So before, as I told you, before we look how sentence structure works, before we go with the with simple compound and complex sentences, it's better to learn first some basic components of a sentence. If we talk about the parts of a sentence, largely or mainly a sentence is having a subject and a predicate or this predicate it contains verb so in other words we say a sentence is having subject and verb now what is subject subject it can be a noun or a pronoun that does the action or we can say or another definition is about about whom the sentence is a subject may be a noun or a pronoun and it is the doer of action the person the object which does the action in a sentence is called a subject or about whom the sentence is. Subject means about whom the sentence is. If it is about this pen, I can say like this, uh, this pen is black in color. So that means the sentence is about this pen. When it is about this pen, though that means this pen is the subject in the sentence. So about whom the sentence is, it may be about a person, about a place, about a thing, about an idea, about an opinion, any abstract thing, any abstract idea. So that all which answers the question like about whom the sentence is, forms the subject of a sentence. Like we have the two examples, the sun is shining, the sky is clear. Now we have these two bold faced words at the beginning of every sentence of these two sentences. First sentence is about the sun, that means the sun is the subject. Second sentence is about sky, that means the sky is the subject. So about whom the sentence is that is the subject of a sentence. When we talk about the parts of sentence, we have these two parts, mainly subject and predicate. Then. We have predicate. What is predicate? Predicate is the action performed by the particular subject in the sentence. It is the action which is performed. Or I, I, can, I can say like this. Action done by the subject is predicate. Action done by the subject is predicate. For example, Rahul is going to market. 
the sentence is about rahul so rahul is subject and he is going to market this all forms the predicate of the sentence which includes verb and object so whatever is said about the subject whatever subject does or whatever is said about the subject that all is the predicate the first sentence is i love macaroni and cheese the sentence is about i so i is the subject and what is said about the subject that the subject loves macaroni and cheese this is predicate marin has a pet the sentence is about marin marin is subject and what is said about subject this is this part it's predicate anusha can draw anusha is the subject of the sentence and what she can do she can draw this is said about the subject so this is predicate of that of the sentence i talked about two different parts of sentence one is subject and another is predicate so subject is very simple to remember very simple to know it is action done by the subject or about whom the sentence is then this predicate is action done by the subject subject is doer of the action and about whom the sentence is predicate is action done by the subject or what is said about the subject that's predicate now let's come to the simple compound and complex sentences now this is the time to hit upon the simple compound and complex sentences in order to understand simple compound and complex sentences it's important to know about clauses first because when we talk about compound and complex sentences and simple sentences we need to know about the clause because these sentences they contain clauses in themselves so it's it's very essential to first know about the clauses what's a clause a clause is a part of a sentence it's a part of a sentence with a subject and a verb it can also be a group of words so clause is a part of a sentence which itself contains subject and verb so or it can be a group of words having subject and verb i would like to give an example after we finished school we went home after we finished the school we went home see there are two two clauses are there one is we finished the school another is we went home this is a conjunction here so there are two clauses in the sentence like after we finished the school and then it is we went home if you see there yeah, there are two clauses uh, in both these clauses we have the subject to we see the first clause is we finished the school the sentence is about we we is the subject we went home the sentence is about we so we is the subject in both the sentences and in both the sentences we have finished and we have went these two are the verbs so a clause is a part of a sentence which contains both subject and it contains verb we have i gave you the example of two clauses which contain both subject and which contain verb so i hope this clause concept is clear to you and to know about the clauses before touching these simple compound and complex sentences is essential let's talk about the types of clauses there are two types of clauses main two types are there one is independent clause which is sometimes which is also called as main clause this clause can stand on its own and still make meaning independent clause is the clause which can stand on its own it does not require some supporting sentence or it does not require some supporting clause clause so it can give its meaning when it stands alone also so this clause is called independent clause now in the same sentence c after we finished we went home it is we went home that is independent if i tell you i went home you can directly get the get the get the full meaning that sir he went home either yesterday or day before yesterday because 
when I said went, that is the past tense, past indefinite. But if I tell you after we finished school, is the meaning complete? After we finished school, no. Your ears may be waiting for some more information because the sentence is incomplete, the clause is incomplete. So this is not the independent clause, this is the independent clause in this example. So independent clause is that clause which can stand on its own and can still make meaning. Now dependent clause and subordinate clause. Dependent clause is also called as subordinate clause. This is a clause that cannot exist on its own and give meaning. It cannot exist on its own and it cannot give us complete meaning. It cannot exist on its own. It's incomplete without the dependent clause or it is incomplete without the rest of the sentence. It can only add meaning to the independent clause next to it. It can only add meaning to the independent clause. It is not having the complete meaning. Rather, it adds the meaning of the complete. It adds the meaning of independent clause. So now let's take the same example. There is this clause after we finish the school, as I told you. It's a dependent clause because it does not give us complete meaning. Does it make any sense if I tell you after we finish the school? Or if I tell you after you finish your college? So could you have you understood anything? So nothing. It cannot be understood. It cannot make sense unless and until it is supported by some other clause. That is dependent clause. So depend that is independent. Dependent clause or subordinate clause does not give us complete meaning and it cannot stand on its own. Then, very fascinating thing I want to tell you. Do you know fanboys and rabbits? Because we just see when we talk about Compound, simple compound and complex sentences. For compound and complex sentences, we need to talk about coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. Because these two conjunctions will be required, these two types of conjunctions will be required for the formation of compound and complex sentences. So it is better to know about these, these, two, these two types of conjunctions. We have the first one that's fanboys and the second one is rabbits. They all are conjunctions that are used to connect ideas in a sentence. Let's first talk about fanboys. What's a fan? What are fanboys? These are coordinating conjunctions that connect equally important ideas. They are coordinating conjunctions and they connect equally important ideas. The ideas which are equal. The ideas which make some sense when they are combined to each other. So the prefix co in the coordinating conjunction, the prefix co in coordinating conjunctions, it suggests that two parts are equally important just like two captains of a team are. So co in the coordinating conjunction, it suggests that both the parts of the sentence, they are equally important. So both the parts are equally important. When we use coordinating conjunctions to join two, two clauses, it means both the clauses are important. Like two captains of a team. Then we have habits. Habits are subordinating conjunctions. They are subordinating, not coordinating. They connect to two ideas of unequal importance. Subordinating conjunctions, they connect two ideas of unequal importance. The prefix sub in subordinating conjunction suggests that one idea is below another in importance. So this sub in subordinating conjunctions, it gives us the idea that one idea among two ideas which these subordinating conjunctions are connecting. This sub gives us the idea that one idea is Lesser or below in importance than the other one. Just like a submarine is below the surface or subway is below the surface. In the same way it shows us that some one idea among the two ideas which we are connecting, one is lesser in importance and one is below another in importance. 
So this is about fanboys and wabbits. So I'll tell you actually these fanboys and wabbits, they are acronyms used for different conjunctions that I'll tell you forward. What are the rules of these fanboys? Where can we use coordinating conjunctions? When the fanboys connect to two ideas that could each be a sentence of its own, then we put a comma in front of, of the fanboys. When these fanboys connect to two ideas that could each be a sentence on its own, when these two ideas, they are sentences on their own, so we need to put a comma before co sub coordinating conjunction. Then when fanboys do not connect to two ideas that could each be a sentence, then we do not put a comma in front of the fanboys. When these fanboys, when these coordinating conjunctions connect to two ideas, and these two connector ideas, they are not, they are not full sentences. So there is no need to put comma before coordinating conjunction. Then wabbits, they also operate under two rules. There are two rules also for subordinating conjunctions, but the two rules are quite different from the above. They are different rules from the coordinating conjunctions. What are the rules for subordinating conjunctions? When the wabbits begin a sentence, then a comma is placed in the middle of sentence. If you begin a sentence with a wabbit, with a subordinating conjunction, then comma is placed in the middle of the sentence. When the wabbits are in the middle of a sentence, now if these subordinating conjunctions, they occur in the middle of sentence, then a comma is not placed in front of the wabbits. So then no need to put comma in front of the subordinating conjunctions. This I'll show you forward with the help of examples. Now let's come to the simple sentence. What's a simple sentence? A simple sentence is a simple statement about casual day-to-day -day matters. Facts, information about something and more. A simple sentence is a simple statement about daily routine, about some matter, about some fact, about some information. It may be some normal information. And another fact about simple sentences is, is that it has about simple sentence is that it has one verb constituting a single independent clause. It has one verb or it has that makes one independent clause. Or we can say a simple sentence it has one finite verb. What's a finite verb? Finite verb are the verbs that agree with the subject. They agree with the subject. If the subject is singular, the verb is in the singular form. If the subject is plural, the verb comes in the plural form. So, and they express the mood, tense and number and person in the sentence. So this is about simple sentence. So they express mood, tense. These finite verbs express mood, tense, number and person. Let's go with some definitions of simple sentence. A simple sentence according to Cambridge Dictionary, it is a sentence that has only one verb. As I told you, it contains at least one verb, one finite verb. Then Collins Dictionary says, it is a sentence consisting of a single main clause. It consists, it's consisting of a single main clause that is dependent, independent clause, but not dependent clause. Then I would like to talk about Macmillan dictionary. Macmillan says a sentence consisting of one independent clause only. It contains one independent clause and it has a subject and verb and often an object or complement and one or more adjuncts. It contains like subject, verb, object also, sometimes complement or an adjunct. I talked about subject, predicate, object, complement, adjunct in the previous class where we talked about parts of sentence and types of sentence. So this is what Macmillan Dictionary says about simple sentence. And Sometimes simple sentences have compound structures. Sometimes you will find the structure is compound. And there are four main types of compound structures like 
Sometimes you will see a sentence, simple sentence having compound subject. What's compound subject? It is a subject that has two parts. That has two parts that are often connected with a coordinating conjunction. Sometimes a simple sentence may have two subjects which are which are connected with a coordinating conjunction. That means by a fan voice, by a fan voice. Like example, I would like to give you. Philip and John like to study in the morning. But this is a simple sentence. Like uh, Philip and John like to study in the morning. We have a fine, we have a normal verb. So we have single verb there in the sentence. But we when we see we have two subjects, Philip and John, it's not only one subject, it's two. So we call this compound subject. We call this a simple sentence having compound subjects. Philip and John are two separate nouns and when they are connected together by the end, they create a compound subject. Then sometimes you will see compound verb, simple sentence with compound verb. What is compound verb? It's a verb that has two parts often connected with a coordinating conjunction. You will find a simple sentence with two verbs. Again, they are connected with a coordinating conjunction. For example, Eliza goes to library and studies. There are two verbs. Goes, studies. Now in the example, these two are separate verbs. And when we are having a simple sentence with two separate verbs, we call that compound verb. We call this, this construction of verbs, we call it compound verb. Then compound direct object. Object is the part of sentence which receives the action. So we have the compound direct object. Object is having two types, direct and indirect object. Object, we talked it in the previous class. So a noun that receives the action of the verb. Now to find the direct object, you can usually ask who and what. See, there is a, there is a sentence. The green dish hit the ground. The green dish hit the ground. Now, if I ask you who, and if I ask you what, so it is like, what did the dish hit? The dish hit the ground. So the ground here is the object. And when the ground is added to the rest of the sentence, it shows where the dish broke, the ground receives the action. So we call it, it the sentence may be like this, the green dish hit or broke. Now, if I say the green dish hit the ground, so this is compound direct object of a simple sentence. Then compound prepositional phrase. This is the fourth structure. It is a phrase that begins with a preposition. For example, the boy hits at the man's head. So this, the man, the man's head, it is preceded by, by this preposition at. So this means this is a preposi compound prepositional phrase. These are the four different structures of simple sentence. Now there are examples of simple sentences. See the first sentence is, this is a wonderful place. So we have subject this and we have predicate is a wonderful place. Then we have compound subject and predicate. Navya, Daya and Priya are going to Thailand for their vacation. So we have compound subject. It's not one subject, it's more than one. So we call it compound subject. Then we have, I was waiting at the park. At the park. So it's prepositional phrase. We have subject, predicate, and at the park is a prepositional phrase. Let's talk about compound sentence. And here we will be talking about fanboys. Compound sentence is the sentence that has two or more independent clauses. It has two or more independent clauses which do not depend on others connected by a coordinating conjunction. It has two independent clauses or two or more independent clauses. They are connected by coordinating conjunctions. And compound sentences make a piece of writing look more sophisticated and informative. This is the function of compound sentences. They make writing more sophisticated 
and more informative. And fanboys, these coordinating conjunctions, they are fanboys. And fanboy is an acronym for these seven common coordinating conjunctions. Well, F stands for for, A stands for and, N stands for nor, B stands for but, O stands for or, Y stands for yet, and S stands for so. These seven are coordinating conjunctions which are used for compound sentences. So you get to know that a compound sentence is a sentence which contains two independent clauses or two or more independent clauses. Let's see what different definitions talk about compound sentence or different sources. Again, as usual, I would like to first take Cambridge Dictionary. Cambridge Dictionary says a sentence made from two independent sentences joined by a sentence which is made up of two independent sentences. As I told you, two independent clauses and it is joined by an, or, or but means coordinating conjunctions. So we call it a compound sentence like Mary read and Tom slept. Mary read and Tom slept. Compound sentence. Then according to the Macmillan Dictionary, Macmillan Dictionary says a compound sentence is defined as a sentence which is consisting of two or more independent clauses linked by coordinating conjunction. So Macmillan Dictionary, it says the same thing which I discussed with you. Then Collins Dictionary says it is a sentence consisting of two or more independent coordinate clauses. Coordinate clauses where coordinating conjunctions are required. This is what Collins Dictionary says. Before we make compound sentences, there are certain rules which we need to keep in our mind. And these certain rules are, like when forming a compound sentence, when you form a compound sentence, you have to use coordinating conjunctions to link the independent clauses by conscious and be conscious to the punctuation as well. So the first rule is in order to combine these two coordinating, these two uh, clauses, we need to link them with coordinating conjunctions and we need to be very cautious about the punctuation. So given below are the points, these, the, which we need to keep in our mind. Like, remember that compound sentences are a combination of more than one main clause. First thing we need to keep in mind that is, a compound sentence is a combination of two or more main clauses. A main clause or an independent clause is a clause that can stand by and pass off a complete meaningful sentence. And I told you main clause or independent clause is a clause which does not require some other, other supporting clauses in order to make me in order to give meaning and make sense. So it's complete in meaning and sense. Then rule number second is make sure you are using, you use a comma before the coordinating conjunction that links two independent clauses. So when a coordinating conjunction is linking two main clauses, it should be preceded by a comma. The coordinating conjunctions that can be used to link the clauses in a compound sentences are the coordinating conjunction, there are seven, friend boys, for and be, uh, for and nor, but or yet so. These are seven coordinating conjunctions. Next rule is, in some cases, you can also form a compound sentence without the use of coordinating conjunctions. How? When you do so, when you do so, when you form a coordinating, when you form a compound sentence without the help of coordinating conjunction, you have to place a semicolon in between the two main clauses. So in between the two main clauses, you need to put semicolon. Okay, next. As far as capitalization is concerned, you have to capitalize only the first letter of the first word in the compound sentence. Now, unless you are using prono pr proper nouns in the sentence, so then obviously proper nouns, they require capitalizing their first letter. Otherwise, we need only to make the first letter of the sentence capitalize. 
unless and until we are not using, if we are not using proper nouns. If there occurs any proper noun in between the se sentence, in between compound sentence, the first letter of each comma, this proper noun should be capitalized. These are certain rules which you need to keep in your mind. Now let's go with the examples. I am ready to go, but my brother has not reached the home yet. Just focus on the first sentence. I am ready to go. Does it make complete sense? Yes, it makes. Right. I am ready to go. It makes a complete sense. It has subject. It has verb. I is subject and rest of the part is predicate. Where, where ready is uh, the verb. Then, my brother has not reached the home yet. My brother is the subject. Reached is the main verb. Again, we have another clause. So when the, these two clauses, they are independent clauses. Why? They can stand by their own. They give us complete meaning and complete sense. They give us complete meaning. So when these two main clauses are, are, are combined by coordinating conjunction and coordinating conjunction is followed by comma, we call this sentence as in as compound sentence so we have independent clause we have punctuation comma we have coordinating conjunction but then we have independent clause and another one so next is <clears throat> jerry did not complete his homework so the teacher punished him so jerry did not complete his homework independent clause then so is the coordinating conjunction. The teacher punished him. Independent clause. So and the compound sentence. My brother should drop me or I cannot make it to the reception. My brother should drop me. Independent clause or is coordinating conjunction. I cannot make it to the reception. I cannot reach to reception if he doesn't drop me. So I cannot make to the reception is another main clause. So when two independent clauses are joined by coordinating conjunction with preceded with a comma, we call that sentence as compound sentence. <clears throat> now we have complex sentence. A complex sentence, it consists of minimum one, in, one dependent clause and one independent clause. So now complex sentence has minimum one dependent and minimum one independent clause. They are connected by subordinating conjunction. That means wabbits. Wabbit is the acronym where W stands for when, A stands for after, B stands for because, because, B stands for before, I stands for if, T stands for though, S stands for since. So here we use wabbit subordinating conjunctions. Let's go with the definitions. Oxford Dictionary says, complex sentence consisting one main part, that is one main class of a sentence and one or more other parts called affixes or subordinate clauses. We have one dependent and one independent clause in complex sentence. Collins Dictionary says, it says uh, it's a sentence containing at least one main clause and one subordinate clause. Same thing. Then Macmillan Dictionary defines complex sentence. It says it's a sentence consisting of an independent clause and one or more subordinate clauses. It is a sentence where we have one independent and one or more independent clauses. So these are the definitions. Now there are again some points which we need to remember in order to make complex sentences. Let's look at what all <clears throat> you need to focus on when forming a complex sentence. A complex sentence follows a particular structure. It should have at least one independent clause and one subordinate clause. The first thing to keep in mind is one independent minimum and one subordinate clause. Then when forming a complex sentence, make sure you use a subordinating conjunction to link them together. When you, are conduct, when you are connecting two uh, clauses, when you are making a complex sentence, make sure you are connecting these two clauses with the help of subordinating conjunction. 
and if the subordinating conjunction is used in between the two clauses, you need not to use a comma before the conjunction. As we did in the compound sentences, when we connected compound sentences with the help of coordinating conjunctions, we put comma before coordinating conjunction. But this should not be repeated. This should not be done with the coordinating with the with the complex sentences. For complex sentences, when we are using subordinating conjunction in the middle of sentence, it does not require comma before it. In case the subordinating conjunction appears in the beginning of a sentence, forming a dependent clause, use a comma, comma uh, after it. So now if you are inserting subordinating conjunction at the beginning of a sentence, now when you form a dependent clause, we should use comma after dependent clause, after subordinate clause. Then, and the rule is, we can also use of relative pronouns to form relative clause, clauses, which also, which are also subordinate clauses. Relative clauses, when we, when we make them with the help of relative pronouns, they are also subordinate clauses. And that means a sentence with a relative clause and an independent clause can also pass off a complex sentence. That means a relative clause and an independent clause can also make a complex sentence. And when using a relative clause, make sure you enclose them within commas. So relative clause should be kept in commas. They are most extra information about the subject or the object in the sentence because they are mostly extra information about the subject or object in the sentence. Now, let's see complex sentence with a subordinating conjunction in the beginning, when it is in the middle. After we finish school, let us go, let us go play in the park. Subordinating conjunctions forming the subordinate clause and independent clause. So let, after we finish school, let us go play, let's go to play in the park. Now, complex sentence with a subordinating conjunction in the middle examples are here. For complex sentences with a subordinating conjunction in the middle, Latha did not finish all the work because she reached home late. See, Latha did not finish, finish all the work because she reached home late. So, we have here one independent clause and we have one dependent clause like this, she reached home late. So we do not know why she reached home late. So this clause is dependent clause, is dep it depends upon the independent clause. This clause, it completes the meaning of main clause with the help of subordinating conjunction. So when we are making a complex sentence, when the subordinating conjunction is used in the middle, we do not use comma in front of this conjunction. So we call this complex sentence. <clears throat> then I will be on my way as soon as my brother picks me up. Next example, you can check it by your own. <clears throat> then complex sentence with a relative clause as the dependent clause with a relative clause. My brother who completed his mechanical engineering is not working at this company is now working at this company. We have this relative clause who completed his mechanical engineering. I put it in the comma, here is one comma, here is one comma, because it's extra information about the subject to my brother. So this forms, a, this is a relative clause and relative clause is itself considered as, an, as a dependent clause. So we can also form complex sentence without the help of these wabbits, without the help of subordinating conjunctions, with the help of relative clause, when we place relative clause. So then, <clears throat> the hotel where we had our farewell dinner is being shut. This is another example. I would like you to go with the example by your own. So this is all for simple compound and complex sentences. We shall be going on with some extra examples in the upcoming classes. So this is all for today. Uh, I would like to stop here. Thank you. Thank you for listening me carefully. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon.
for more updates.